Step into the heart. Take up residence there. From this vantage point, you will be shown the glory of the world. Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to Art Awakening. My name is Ona Christie, visionary artist and mystic oracle. And this video is all about Mary Magdalene. Uh, Mary Magdalene is a, a beautiful ascended master, and uh, she is thought to be like the twin flame of Yeshua. And she appears in the Bible as the beloved apostle of Jesus the Christ. And she said to have been the first one to see him on his resurrection. She was apparently wealthy and helped to fund Jesus's ministry. And she's thought to be the woman from whom he cast seven demons. And later she became known as the apostle to the apostles. Because of, according to Gnostic tradition, she received special teachings from the master and was the most loved of his followers. Um, so in this video, I'm going to be sharing a, a transmission that I received from Mary Magdalene and in the form of a painting and also some verbal transmissions and just sharing what's come through through me uh, uh, from her in the hopes that it will help to um, assist whomever is drawn to watching this video, as well as I think she's got some activation um, energy coming forth in, in what she's um, telling us here. So this is like the third painting that's come forward in a row of Mary Magdalene for me, and it's always been at the equinox. It feels like every time she comes forward, it's it's heralding uh, something about the energies to follow, right, in the next six months. So if you are tuning into this in the fall of 2023, um, it, it, you may pick up some activations uh, to, to bring us through this coming time. Or if you're catching this later, it's still going to be activations that are relevant to wherever you are in your journey right now, as well as possibly uh, like harmonics of energies uh, in, in, in the time frame that you're in. So just to kind of back up, I think these three paintings are really telling the story of a journey of awakening as well. And so I, I know I'm looking at these also as just telling me about periods of time in my life, not just the last year and a half. Um, so this first one is Mary Magdalene of the Sea, and it's really dreamy. And to me, it's speaking of this uh, sort of unconscious, sort of very primal feminine intuition and ability to just kind of tune in, but really from a less consciously awakened state and more just like this innate intuition that's coming forward that, uh, you know, when you are in the dream state that you can tune in and pick up on things from other worlds, right? And I think for a lot of us who are star seeds or are undergoing an awakening in this lifetime, I think this painting speaks to like that, that pre-awakening state, right? To the state of just having that intuition, but maybe not being quite so aware of it or using it in a conscious way, right? And then the second painting came forward in the spring of 2023. And this one is Mary Magdalene of the Sacred Flames. And it's, um, it utilizes the Shakti Mantra she's, um, and the Shakti Mudra, okay? And so this one is speaking more about... Um, a purification, right? And which can include anything from like the dark night of the soul to any kind of a sense of, you know, needing to withdraw or, or be by oneself or to, to go through uh, the initiations that we all are put through as spiritually awakening beings. That's what this painting is really talking about. And, and, um, and I feel like in my life anyway, it, the, the, the spring and summer and into the fall of 2023 was a lot of revisiting of that kind of energy, right? And a final kind of uh, moving through a big cycle and 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 going through that kind of initiatory energy, um, and then this one that come, just recently came forward, I, I call it Mary Magdalene of the White Wind, and you can see the um, 
there's kind of these white, uh, they look like ether or, or spiritual wind, like moving in and almost like into her ear, right? So she's able, she's listening and she's, and at this point, her eyes are wide open and she is really focused on the heart and she's receptive. She's really gotten to this point of really able to receive the messages in a very pure way. Okay, so what this is saying, when this painting's coming forward, and I'm just really looking at this painting as though it were an oracle card, which at some point it might be. Um, and I think that's true of any mystic art, right? You can really read it like an oracle card. Um, this is really talking about like the feminine side of your, your spiritual power, having been really awakened. About the goddess aspect, having been awakened and the feminine Christ, right? And Christ being the awakened, fully um, integrated human being, right? Um, that is in tune with the life force of the cosmos. And so here she is in her beautiful glory. And I, I wanna look at some of these um, images, these archetypal images that have come forward in this painting because every single one of them uh, has something to say. And also I, I, for a couple of these, I did actually tune in and received a direct transmission from them. And I'm actually going to start with the transmission directly from Mary Magdalene. And so how this works is usually I will get the image first and then I'll tune into the image and receive the further downloads and transmissions. So um, the, the, the full message from Mary Magdalene um, coming in with this painting. She says, raise your heart to your lips and drink. All of creation depends on this. This is your next initiation. It is a purification through the heart. Love is as steady as the sun and as bright. Step into the heart. Take up residence there. From this vantage point, you will be shown the glory of the world. Love, love is the message divine. So the impression I'm getting and the really strong feeling I'm getting from this painting and this transmission is that this is an activation painting. Okay, and so she's coming through right now with these words and with this image to assist in activating the next step for humanity and for many of us, right, in really stepping into our Christ essence, okay? And she talks about purification. So that's that, that, that phase of purification that initiates like with the last spring with the prior painting is it's not over but it's really stepped up into uh, like its next level right so at this point it's less of a purification of our you know our bodies or our individual and it's it's I feel like it's talking about a purification through the heart that's going to really help us to connect with each other in a beautiful way, to connect with the life force of the planet in a deeper way, to connect with all of creation in a deeper way. And it's still though a period of purification. So what I'm seeing here is that when this painting comes up, it's 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 going to be looking forward into another phase of purification, but having already attained a certain sense of of wholeness, right? So we're moving into this next phase of purification um, with a lot of strength, or at least the capacity to reach out to uh, Mary Magdalene or to other spirit guides and 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 really ask them to support us in and really shining forth our light, right? Um, this is a really solar image, right? And, and she's got the, the sun here with the, um, the all-seeing eye, the eye of providence. We'll get to that in a minute, as well as this beautiful kind of um, halo um, aura. It's kind of hard to see maybe with the lights here, but um, 
that she's she's got all this light streaming out from her head and and so a lot of a lot of solar energy in this and she's talking about love being as steady as the sun and what i'm really really seeing here is this emphasis on the heart and being able to see through the eyes of the heart okay um and so I'm going to share a couple of downloads. Again, these are messages that I received when I tuned in with my Akashic guides asking about aspects of this painting. And the first thing I asked about was the, the equinox, is the time that she's coming forward. And the message was this, Mary Magdalene's appearance at the equinoxes are indeed no coincidence as these are the times of greatest change in the cycle of the year. She shows you the energies that are forthcoming to you in the season ahead, for as she embodies an exalted earth, so she also holds the key to time. So she's really coming forward for us right now to assist us in this process of great awakening and to help to open our hearts and to help us to stand in our strength and in our truth, okay? Um, red is a very uh, traditional color for Mary Magdalene to appear in. It really connects with that root chakra and helps us to ground and to say, stay strong and to really feel that connection that we have, to feel so incredibly strongly connected with the life force, with the spirit spirit with the God force of the universe, that we have no doubt, right, that we can really move forward in our own truth and from the heart with no fear, okay? So I'm feeling like fearlessness is huge for um, this, this aspect that she's bringing forward right now, that she is going to help us um, to move forward into the months and years ahead without fear or like just just looking fear straight in the eye and saying you are not going to take me down okay i am stronger love is stronger than fear okay um all right so i asked also just my akashic guidance about mary and who she is right who is mary magdalene and and here is that message they said, Mary is the echo of a memory of all that you once held dear. She reawakens your remembrance of oneness, of your heart being so fully in sync with the cosmic heartbeat that your experience of being can only be described as pure music. Mary holds open the gateway to this ecstasy of love making possible your return to that exalted state of being that you can feel right now in your mind's eye, fully at peace with and connected with and at one with divine harmony. Mary is the grounding rod, that which anchors in and helps direct the flow of electric energy to earth. It is no accident that she is the first to whom the risen Lord reveals himself. It is necessary that it be she. Mary is the sacred earth. She is the sacred timekeeper and space holder, the sacred womb of the resurrection. Okay, so this is powerful stuff. I really encourage you to... Um, to listen to that portion again. I've put all these little portions in the timestamps in the description below, because I think it took me several times to really listen to these messages and start to feel as to what they're actually saying. Okay, she's really um, embodying the energy of divine love, and um, she's helping to open that the earth itself up to that energy and anchor it into the earth okay so when we work with this energy whether you're working with the painting or tuning in on your own to mary magdalene this is really working at a very deep level with mother earth herself with the planet earth and helping to anchor divine love into the earth and also into the the field of all humanity okay so this is incredibly powerful energy that is being activated right now on the planet okay um huge portal 
And I, I do have to say that uh, um, it's it, it, there's a lot of resistance to this right now, okay? So I normally, um, you know, when something comes forward, like for an equinox, that's when I will release the video. And this one, it was just like there was one obstacle after another coming forward. And I finally, you know, just kind of let it just, it felt like it was like also a time where even though the resistance was there, it wasn't all negative. Part of it was like, okay, this is a really sacred period of time, right? Before the, uh, like between the eclipses, there's a, a pair of eclipses in, in mid-October and late October. And it was sort of like the standstill kind of feeling of time that it had to stay here but I'm going to be posting this video on the date of the second eclipse the lunar eclipse okay so again this is feminine energy very big so I think it was maybe meant to be that um, it was sort of a delay in in getting out there but it's going to help to purify the feminine, to purify the lunar energies and um, moving forward into a, a very intense <laughs> time and um all right and and then she's talking it's talking about the resurrection okay so this energy that she's holding right now is incredibly powerful and in in terms of enabling a resurrection right and we are at this point on the planet right now where we're seeing all the stuff crumbling right? But we're also uh, holding space for, right, this sacred womb and starting to plant the seeds for the new golden age that will be coming up out of this, so maybe past our lifetimes, but it's it's starting now, right? And, and her energy uh, that she's bringing forward, this divine energy that she symbolizes is is opening up right now. And I also want to share that th this resurrection energy um, it, it was my experience in vision a few years ago. I had a vision of the resurrection and it began with the three Marys. And I, I was like, it was like, I could feel I was them, right? I could feel the three Marys and they were grieving. It was such an intense grief, but they were expressing the grief and it was my experience that in that was the act of grieving on the part of the three Marys that made the resurrection possible because as they were grieving and, and it finally kind of came to a head and all of a sudden I could feel and and it was like I became this energy of this this upwelling energy and it was Christ coming up through green water. And it was such an intense experience that as, and, and I was like experiencing it from the point of view of Christ coming up. And it was so intense that I was coughing and like, it felt like I was drowning. I thought I was actually going to be drowning. Um, it was that intense, but it was like the, the, the Mary's and their grieving was, was holding it forward. So part of what might be coming forward in the next period of time, either for you, if you're catching this later or for the collective right now, um, is the sense of grief and letting loose, right? With, with with long held grief right and and allowing the that energy to be witnessed the the grieving allowing the tears to flow and and that can be such a healing thing it used to be in in times long ago that it was the job of the women especially uh probably men and women both would wail and they'd tear their clothes and their hair and so forth um, as part of the grieving process when somebody passed. And um, uh, in many cultures, that was actually the job mostly of the women. And, and then at some point, I think in ancient Rome, it got to the point where people would actually hire women to wail and to grieve <laughs> because it was considered that important. Um, but it's this is an encouragement to really feel in. And, it, you know, if there's any grief sitting in the heart or if you are feeling the grief of the earth, the grief of the collective, the grief of the ancestors, 
um, this is an encouragement um, to to really, if it feels right to you, to allow yourself to be a channel for that and to express it, which can be a very painful process, right? So part of this whole thing and this what's coming forward in this painting has to do with sacrifice. And we're going to touch upon that in a little bit. Okay, and, and and even just the act of grieving can be a sacrifice because you are really moving through a lot of shadow work when you grieve. And so if you are feeling called to sacred grieving as a healing process, it, it just feels like Mary is holding sacred space for you. Okay, so um, I'm going to move on to this symbol of the eye, okay? And um, I'm sure if you at all are familiar with esoterica, you will recognize the eye symbol as the eye of providence or the all-seeing eye of God. There's also a big thing about like the dark cabal or whatever using this eye okay so I want to really make clear that any archetype will have the, the law of polarity working with it all right and so there will be a negative and a positive side of that archetype all right and historically if you go back far enough it was always that positive side of the the eye of providence or the the all-seeing eye um, meaning the the eye of the creator the creator as um, seeing everything in divine oneness, right? And, you know, as the eye takes in everything at once, and that there is nothing that is outside the purview of the great spirit, right? Um, that we all have that oneness in common, and and we're all seen, that, that, that you... He, no matter how lonely or alone you feel, he, you're always within the eyesight of the holy and the sacred and the, the creator. And it, it also signifies like the third eye or the, the, the ability to really see at a deeper, deeper level, right? To see beyond the veil. <laughs> and um, But then notice she's holding it at the level of the heart. And again, um, and also within the sun, which is a symbol for the illumined self, right? The higher self for the, the, the Christ self. And um, so she's holding it right at the heart level. And again, the, the message is to see through the eyes of the heart when your heart is fully open. And then, then you're able to see things from a different perspective and you're able to see all aspects of things right so that it becomes it, it's you're stepping out of polarity right and it's this uh encouragement now to you know when especially if you're feeling triggered or if somebody else is feeling triggered just take a step back and allow yourself to see the whole picture right to see and and um you know where there might be uh wounding right even in you know people that may seem to be the bad guys right just recognizing the humanity of every person um even if uh, they are engaging in behavior that is not aligned with the highest good all right so i'm going to share a download um an Akashic message around the eye. I asked about the all-seeing eye, and here's the message. The eye signifies a portal between worlds. Meditate on this symbol as a tool for transcendence. Meditation on the eye can help to open up your powers of clairvoyance, remote viewing, and also uncover hidden knowledge that will be made available to you through grace as you work with this energy in the spirit of humility and service. The healing way is to bring this symbol down to the level of the heart. This is a portal for transcendence. Okay, so again, it's it actually is working with that third eye energy, um, but taking it out of the realm of cold um, intellectualism right and into that level of the heart and that warmth and compassion and grace right um so this is really encouraging us we can use this symbol and work with it as a spiritual tool for 
um, enlightenment, actually, uh, to assist us in opening up our third eye as well as, but we want to make sure that we also engage the heart center when we work with our third eye or do any third eye work um, moving through this period. We want to engage the heart and then we'll turn into the third eye and work with that. All right. And they're calling that the healing way is to connect, um, you know, that vision with the heart, um, the portal for transcendence. All right. And OK, so when I was painting this, um, it took a while, like her, she came forward right away. And this beautiful raven, and which I'll talk about in a minute, came forward pretty much right away. But then there was, it took a while for these, these um, images here, the sun and the eye and the crown of thorns to, to come in. And uh, it had kind of come down to the eye was there and the sun was there. And it just felt like it, there had to be something else. It felt like the eye needed to containing or protection of some sort. And then all of a sudden it was like crown of thorns. It came right in. It was like, oh, okay, that's what's needed. Um, and so I painted in the crown of thorns. And um, so, but it was really kind of like, I wasn't quite sure what the meaning was of that. Um, so again, I tuned in and here's the message that I got about the crown of thorns. Uh, the crown of thorns encompassing the eye symbolizes restriction. It is a reminder that the way of truth in this world of dualism is one of hardship and sacrifice. There will be tests and initiations as one journeys through dualism towards unity consciousness. And it is the crown of thorns is also a badge of humility, signifying the choice to humbly align oneself with the earth to fully accept and love the body and physical existence. For it is through the union of body, mind, and soul that the blossoming of consciousness takes place. You shall find that as you pass through that portal, the hidden beauty of the thorn shall be revealed to you, and the crown shall leaf out and bloom with verdant life. Okay, so this to me is a huge message of hope and of fortitude and of, of holding the faith, right? What I'm seeing right here is I don't know what the crown was, the thorns were in the Bible, but what I'm really seeing here is the thorns of the rose. And of course, we have the rose up here too, the white rose, a symbol of purity. Um, the rose, of course, is uh, one of Mary Magdalene's symbols. And I'm really seeing this crown of thorns as the thorns of the rose, okay? And it's talking about the sacrifice of moving through these initiations, right? As we've come down into the physical body, it's not a, always a walk in the park, right? We're learning to bring spirit down into the body and at this point, we're beginning to spiritualize back up again, but it's that we've, we've, there's a reason for us to come down into the body, okay? And for, for many centuries, the body was considered unclean and foul and, and, and was really maligned especially um, in certain religions, religious traditions, um, it was thought that you had to kind of um, keep the body, uh, treat the body harshly, right? And, and so this is really saying it's, it's time to humble ourselves into really coming into the body and accepting it. Um, and, and this is a, a beautiful way also to learn to heal the divine feminine within ourselves and, and uh, uh, of humanity as well, right? Working with our bodies and the body of the earth, okay? And, and so this is another function that I think Mary Magdalene, um, her energy, this archetype really helps us with is is with this compassionate feeling of full unconditional love and acceptance for all parts of us, including the physical body, okay? And including also the shadow aspects of us, okay? Um, 
All right. So speaking of shadow, because this is an animal that often shows up when we do shadow work, is um, the raven here. And um, the this in this painting, the raven showed up as a white raven. Um, and this is a, a really, really special, very significant appearance of the spirit animal. Um, raven is often seen as a messenger between the worlds. Okay, it can be a trickster animal. But I feel like with the white showing up, it's less of a trickster and it's going to be talking more about the messenger, with a, which I feel really fits with this aspect of the white wind coming in, right? And, and opening to the messages of spirit and being open and working with that third eye and opening up the, uh, the powers of intuition and um, really being that vessel for spirit to move through. Um, so Raven's showing up in this way. And, and there is a story, I believe it's Native American, that is really, I think, really important to the symbolism here, that there's a story of Raven as a kind of a Prometheus figure, going up to the sun to bring fire down to mankind. And in the process, he undergoes the sacrifice. The story is that the Raven used to be white. And he went up and brought fire down, but in the process, his feathers got singed and his beautiful, clear voice turned into a harsh croak, right? So there was this sacrifice involved in kind of embodying that solar energy, right? So here's the raven again as the solar figure and this savior figure, right? And, and I feel like what's coming forward right now is that this idea of savior is that we're not any longer to be looking exoterically, to be looking outward for somebody to save us. And I think this is a really, really big, important theme right now in the world, because there's a lot of places and, and, a, and a lot of things happening in the world right now where people are looking for a savior figure, whether it's a political figure to come and fix what's going on in the world, or whether it is a, a religious figure to come and save us all, or whether it's aliens to come down and save humanity, whatever it is, right? Or whether it's a medical technology to save us from some Something that's out there. Um, and uh, the, one of the biggest themes I'm getting right now is that these savior figures are, you know, sometimes they have a role to play, but that's not what we're we're not there anymore okay this this is energy that's left over from a past epoch of humanity and we are here right now to look within right and to step in to our power which is not so much our own power but to open ourselves as vessels for the higher power to flow through us and it's through doing that and and the message of yeshua was to me i don't see it so much as he's going to come save us but as that he was the way shower to show us you know the 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 process by which we can open up to become this vessel and channel for higher love to stream through us right, that he and other ascended masters are way showers to show us how we can access that solar energy within ourselves, right, um, and so I feel like the raven really is uh, resonating, the white raven, with that kind of energy, right, it's, you know, the raven came down as the savior figure to bring the, the, the light, um, but now at this point in humanity, we have the light. The light has been brought to us, okay? It, or it's like we've been enabled so that we can find the light within ourselves. And now it's time to look within and really allow that light to shine, to let go, release anything that we are holding that is is blocking the light, which is within us, right? Just have, having the faith that the light is within us, it's there. We don't really have to do anything except for just release our preconceptions or release <laughs> our fear, right? And just allow that light to shine forward. Okay. Um, 
so also this is a symbol of purity is showing up as a, as a white raven so i i did also tune into the akash and asked about the raven archetype in this painting okay and here's what i was told the raven is a guide and when asked will accompany you in travel between worlds he is an intercessor to the stars he is a high vibrational being and functions much like a powerful crystal in amplifying energy. He's also helpful in communication. See how his beak is at the level of the throat chakra. You may call on this beast to assist in clarifying and amplifying spirit communication of all kinds. Okay, so this is the, the, the second tool or ally that we're being shown here. Um, one was this meditation on the uh, eye of providence and the other is calling on raven and the white raven in particular as a um, as an ally to assist in in really um, opening up the throat chakra right and also there is a message directly from the white raven and here is what he says be not afraid the descent into darkness is a ritual it is, a, it is a rite of passage. This world, this material life is an enactment. You are working magic with your life. The power is within you. Others will use your power if you do not. All power will be utilized for good or for evil purposes. To devote your power for purposes of good requires illumined consciousness and deliberate action. To decline to act on your convictions is to relinquish your power. The forces of light will not attempt to use your power on your behalf. The forces of darkness feel no such restrictions. Therefore, holding to the light is an act of will. Hold fast, hold true, and remember the light is within you. All right, again, another very powerful message all right first of all telling us not to be afraid okay this is all everything that's playing out on the earth right now is one great big huge elaborate ritual all right uh, we know that humanity's been through this descending process and is now on the upswing we are on the ascension path there is absolutely no doubt about that and so we know that the outcome of this ritual this ritual that is being held on the whole planet right now the outcome of that will be a resurrection okay we've had that patterned you know, through the Christ story, uh, I think many, many of us have been through dark nights of the soul where we've been through within our own experience that symbolic death and resurrection. You have experienced it. If you're watching this video, if you've gotten that far, there is no doubt that you have experienced that at some point in your life and you've come through it, right? And this is no different. This is no different this is no different, right? What we're moving through is the world, um, you know, it's chaotic, it's frightening, it's scary. But as light workers, um, we are here as light masters to shine forth the light and also to anchor in that light and to anchor in that knowledge, right? And it's super important to realize we're taking part in a ritual it's it's like we know the outcome of the ritual right and a big part of what is going to help us to come out of this in, in a way that we're resurrecting a human a consciousness and life and light and and going into the next phase of evolution part of that is our conviction and our belief right it's it's like as we really come into the truth of that and hold on to that truth and do not let go of that truth that we're here as at this criti critically beautiful time to to really enact this ritual right to hold the light which can entail grieving it can entail loss and we may be witness to that we may be holding that part of the, the the griever but even that is it's 
is essential. It's an essential part of this whole, whole process. Okay, so to release one's attachments, remembering that we are immortal souls with human bodies right, that there is nothing to fear, that there is nothing to fear, that if you are watching this video and understanding it, that you have been through so many lifetimes, and that a lifetime is but a day in the life of the soul, if, if not an hour or a minute, right? That we can move through this lifetime. And when death comes, it's simply the, the, the night of another day and moving into the dawn of another day when we take on another life, right? You cannot be destroyed. No human being unless they willingly let go of themselves, right? And that's their free choice, right? But as long as you hold on to that conviction that we are the light, that you cannot be destroyed, right? You cannot. And, and so taking part in this ritual, whatever part we're, we're designed to play, it's it, it, it's it's a ritual, right? And there is nothing to fear. Okay. So uh, thank you so much for watching this. And if this painting speaks to you, I will be putting it on my website as a print. And as always, there's going to be one person that's really meant to have the original painting that'll be up on my website as well. And if uh, that is you, just know that she is a very activating painting, this one. Um, I believe the other two, um, the other two paintings in the series both uh, were acquired by healers that were, um, are, will be displaying them in their places of healing. So who knows uh, where, where Mary of the White Wind is destined, but it's, it's a potential for her to be in such a situation as well. All right. So uh, thank you so much for watching. All my heart and love goes out to you. And remember, you were born to be free.